Shalom Aleichem and welcome to Online Smicha. In Shulchan Aruch it is brought that uh, due to the Pasuk, Pekudei Hashem Yisharim Esam Chelev, that the words of Torah make a person happy. It's, it brings enjoyment to the person studying a Torah. So therefore, in times of Rachman and of uh, mourning, when there's, there should be a lack of happiness, you're not allowed to study Torah. So on Tisha B'Av, where Klau Yisrael is mourning the Chorban, the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash, it's brought in Shulchan Aruch, you refrain from learning things that will cause happiness. However, there are certain parts in Gemara, certain parts in Madrashim, and different parts of Torah that, that you're allowed to learn during Tisha B'Av, because they only discuss the matters of the Chorban, and they, don't, they won't... They've come along with a very important lesson, how to behave, etc., etc., but there is, it does not increase happiness during that time. So there is the famous story that's brought in the Gemara of Gittin that, that many learn during the time of Tisha B'Av. Actually, this story is brought in the Masech de Gittin, uh, Nun Hei Amit Beis, and it's also brought in Medrash Eicha, Medrash Eicha Parsha Gimel, and over there, it's brought in different, different versions of the story, but we'll do it. I'll read it inside, spend some time, just read the Gemara inside, and go over the story. It is interesting that it's brought in Svarim, and it's brought from the name of Reb Tzadik HaKoyin from Lublin, that this story of Kamtza Bakamtza uh, is brought in Masech de Gittin. There is, real no, there is no real connection to... Uh, the, 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 the Mishnah or the concepts that are, that are being spoken about in, that, in those pages in the Gemara, it's just about a s- specific word, what that word meant, and then it leads into a page or two about a story of, of, uh, of Kamtza Bakamtza. It seems to be out of place. Yet, it, it must be a, a reason, Hashgach Pratis, that this story is brought in Masech to Gittin. So Rav Tzodek HaKoyin explains, because... Just like a get, a divorce, Rahman al is a separation between a husband and a wife, so too the Khurban caused a form of separation between the Yidin and Klau Yisrael. However, if you, you are more, you look closely to uh, where this uh, story is brought, it's not necessarily brought in the, in the pages that talk about divorce. It's actually brought in the Sechta Gitten in Perik Hanizokin, which talks about damages. And that's also a lesson, that even though there, there became Rachman al-Atzlan, a separation between the Hashem and, and, and B'nai Yisrael during the time of the Chorban, from the time of the Chorban, yet it's different than the separation that's done between, a, that happens between a husband and a wife, Rachman al when they divorce. Because when a get happens, a sechtigitin, when a divorce happens, uh, the separation is final. It's over. These two are, are over. However, damages, even though at the current status there is a damage, but there could be a rebuilding process, and, the, and perhaps the, the rebuilding process will make it even better on the same place, the same structure or whatever it was that could be rebuilt b- bigger and better. And perhaps that's why it's specifically brought in this in this Peyrek, in the Peyrek in da- about damages, in Masech de Gittin, to show that the Churban, even though it caused a separation, Rachman al but when Mashiach comes, it will be bigger and better. A beautiful insight from Reb Tzadik HaKoyin. So, we're going to read the Gemara inside, and Daf Gittin, Masech de Gittin, Daf Chav Hei, Daf Nun Hei Amit Beis, towards the bottom of the page. And Rabbi Yochanan starts this conversation Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan said, "My diksiv, what does the pasuk mean when the pasuk says in Mishlei, Ashrei Adam Mefached Tamid, praiseworthy, fortunate is the man that's always f- fears. He's always he has pachad. He's always concerned how things will end up. He he looks ahead how his actions will will uh, affect the future. Umaksha liboy." Yipel bara, and one who hardened his heart, somebody who doesn't care, he does what he wants, doesn't think about the future, Yipel bara will come to harm. It will affect him. If you don't think ahead what your, what, what your actions will lead to, it will hurt him. 
This is, Rabbi Yechman says, explain us a little more this Pasuk. So Rabbi Yechman says three examples of individuals who didn't hastily did an action, and their action, they didn't realize how, how big of an effect the outcome of that action would be. And the, and the three, three stories in history that he discusses, he says, Akamtsa ubar kamtsa of Yerushalayim, as a result of a story, uh, a, a story that took place between Kamtsa and individuals a name that was called Kamsa and an individual who was, who was called Bar Kamsa. About these two people, involving these two people, Yerushalayim was destroyed. Turmalka, as a result of an incident between a rooster and a hen. Turmalka. Turmalka means that the mountain of the king, Haramelech, was destroyed. And Asaka de Rispak Chorov Beitar. And as a result of an uh, uh, of a incident that happened with the side of a carriage, Beitar was destroyed. Now, we are not going to concentrate on the last two. We are going to concentrate, it's Tisha B'Av today, and we're going to concentrate on the story of Chorov Yerushalayim. Someone, maybe one or two or three people, as we will see this story, didn't think ahead of what the a- outcome of their actions might take, might, might be, and that's why Rachman al-Atzlan, Yerushalayim was destroyed, and we are in Golis. And the title is Kamsa Bar Kamsa. The reason I'm stressing this title, there will be many, many questions, because as you will see the story, not necessarily both should be blamed for this. One of them, you see what he did, was a terrible thing, perhaps Bar Kamsa. Why, what did the Kamsa do in this story? Number one. Number two, when you read, when you read the Gemara, the Gemara actually says it was not Kamsa who is blamed. It's not even Bar Kamsa that's be, being blamed. It's actually the rabbis that didn't do anything about it, that they didn't foresee how, uh, how it's going to uh, affect. Or even the rabbi that didn't want to settle the matter, as the Gemara will say, Further on, he might be the one shoulding, one to blame. So, yet the title of the story is Kamsa Bar Kamsa. The, the story about Kamsa Bar Kamsa is what caused the Churban Habayis. And the Gemara goes on to say like this, Kamsa Bar Kamsa Chor of Yerushalayim, about the sto- involving the story of Kamsa Bar Kamsa. Yerushalayim was destroyed. Let's hear about this story. What's the story? Dahu Gavra, there was this certain man, Derachame Kamtsa. He had a friend called Kamtsa, Ubal Debave Bar Kamtsa. And he had an enemy called Bar Kamtsa. Very interesting. We hear there are three people involved here. There's an individual, a rich man who is making a party, and then there are two people. One is his friend, Kamsa. One is enemy, Bar Kamsa. Why the two individuals we have names? Kamsa and Bar Kamsa. The individual who up, uproared this whole thing, who's making the whole party and he's causing this dilemma, there's no name to him. Hahu Gavra, there was this individual. So in Sifre Drush, it actually says that, you know what, who it was is not, the, not that important, even though he seems to be very evil. It's more a lesson in life to each one of us today, because each one of us is that rich person that has a kamsa and bar kamsa struggling within. So it's not necessarily important to know who that person was. It's we have to t- r- r- relate that story to our life today. So it was this individual that avat sudasa? He made a st- he made a party. He made a banquet. Now, you're making a party, you want to invite your guest. Amalei Lashame, he told to his servant, he told his uh, helper, Zil Aisili Kamsa. You know what? Go invite Kamsa, make sure that he will come to my party. Azel, the, 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 the servant, his messenger went, Aisile Bar Kamsa. He, he invited the wrong person. And he brought Bar Kamsa. Okay. 
Mistakes happen. Also, when, when the, the, the host of the party, when the rich man walks into the banquet hall, Ashkeche, he sees, uh-oh, the Hava Yosef, he sees who's sitting there. Who's sitting there? Bar Kamsa, his enemy. Amale, he goes over to Bar Kamsa, and this is a very funny thing. He speaks to him. This is his rival. This is his enemy. And you would think he would, he would just ram it down him. No, no, no. He speaks to him in a very honorable way, in third party. He says, Michti, Mr. Let's see. Who gavra bal de bava, who gavra who? This person, there is this person who is an enemy of somebody else. My boy is hacha. What's he doing here? He's not, he doesn't tell him, what are you doing here? He's talking to him about an uh, abstract story. There is this enemy of an, an, an individual. What's that person doing here? But obviously he got the hint. Amale, as he says, kum pikoi, kum puk, get up and leave. Amale, so Bar Kamsa responds and said, do me a favor. Hoyu vasoi shafkon. I'm, I'm here already. I, I, it, it could be it's a mistake, but I, I made it here. I was invi mistakenly invited. I'm here. Let me stay. And if you do, I will pay you. I don't want you, God forbid, to spend money on your enemy. So I will pay you for what I eat, for what I drink. Amale, so the usher, the person, I, I refer to it as an usher because in the Medrash, Eicha, doesn't, when it says this story, it actually says, Hahu Asher. There was this wealthy man that made this. So it, look, it seems to be, if the stories are the same stories, that it was a wealthy man that made a party. Amale, so the host says to Bar Kamsa, Loi. Loi, no. I will not let you stay. Even if you pay me. Amale, so Bar Kamsa says, Please. Yavina Loch, the Palga de Suda Seich. I will give you. I will pay not only what it costs to feed me, I will pay half of the value of the party. Amale, lie. The wealthy man, the host, says, No, I'm not interested. I don't want you here. Amale, Sir Bakamsa says, Yavina loch de me kula sidaseich. I will flip the bill. I will pay the whole bill of the whole party. Amale, so the Barkham, so so the usher, the wealthy man says, Loy, I'm not interested in your money. You're ruining my party. Get out. Out. Not only get out, the Gemara says, Naktebiyode, he grabbed him on his hand, Vukme, he picked him up, the Afke and he, he took he took him out. He threw him out of as we say, he threw him out of the hall. Omar now this guy was very embarrassed, Barkhamsa. Omar Sabakamsa said, Ho Yovavios Virabonan, since there were Rabbonan there. There were Chachamim there that saw this taking place. and nobody protested. Nobody stopped him, rebuked him, and told him, Hey, let it live, let it let him let him take it easy. Nobody said anything. Why didn't anybody say anything? Shmamine, it must be Kanichalahu. It must be they, they agree. He, what he's doing is not a terrible thing. Aha. They think that what the, how he behaved is proper. Aizel, I will go. Aizel, I will go. Eichel behu kurza be malka. I will spread slander by the king. And I will spread rumors and I will make the, the king angry at the Yidden. For what they allowed to... Because of what the, the, the Chachamim allowed... And because of the behavior of this individual, I will spread slander. Now, actually, the wording is, I will eat kurza. So it's like a type of food that, that people who speak slander sit and chew. That's, that's an expression that's used. Azal, he went. Amalei the keser. He went to the keser. He went to the king. And he says to them, he says to him, Your honor, Mardu bach yehudai. The Jewish people who are under your leadership have rebelled against you, have rebelled, sorry, has re, have rebelled against you. They've rebelled against you. And they're causing an uproar. Really? I don't know anything about that. 
Amale, he says to them, the king says to Bar Kamsa, really? Me, Amar, who says so? I don't I, I haven't heard and I've I don't see any any uh, actions that the Yidin are, are rebelling. Amale, so the so the Bar Kamsa says to the king, Yeah, I'll show you. Shadar Luhu Karbana, send a animal to the base of Mikdash as an offering. Now we have to know that from what there's a passage that says, Kivesi based filo yakare lachola amim, that Hashem says that my base abhira, my base of Mikdash, is not is obviously primarily for the Jews, but it's also a base tefillah, a house of prayer, lachola amim. For all for all nations. If a guy wants to daven nearby, he can daven. Uh, just like he can pray in his, uh, for, to Hashem, halachically, if a guy pledges and gives a carbon, which is eligible as a carbon, we accept it. So, as long as the carbon was a kosher carbon, it would have been able to be accepted and brought on the Mizbeach. However, this, this Bar Kamta was pulling a trick. From one hand, he tells the king, send the carbon. But he was going to do something that would disqualify it from being used in the base of Mikdash. The king says, they won't accept my carbon. Uh, Bar Kamta said, Shadar Luhu Karbana, send along a carbon. Chazis, you'll see, Ime Karbun Le, you'll see if they will, they, will, they will use it and they will use it as a sacrifice in the base of Mikdash. Azo, the king went, Shadar Biyada Egla Tilsa. He sent along a beautiful, fine-looking calf, and there's nothing better than that. Obviously, if they don't accept it, that means they're rebelling against him. But how did the Ka'asi, as he was going, Bar Kamsa was the messenger to schlep the, car, the animal up to the base of Mikdash, as he was going, Shada Bay Mumma, Bar Kamsa caused a mum. Now, we know that the Karbonas have to be clean, tumming, complete without any blemish the difference is how do you how do you rate a blemish what is a blemish uh, is a blemish a broken limb something noticeable or even something small so for goyim by them it's only a mechusar aver something if it's missing a limb a vital organ something very important then it's called not a tom it's not complete but something which is minor doesn't make it disqualified as a carbon but for a yid that sends a carbon, the carbon has to be picture perfect. Even the smallest thing will disqualify this animal as a carbon. So here, Bar Kamsa placed a mum, a blemish, beneath sifasayim, somewhere in the upper lip. So something small that the guy wouldn't wouldn't claim it's anything bad. Yet the yid would not allow lahav to allow this to be in the base of mikdash, or. But Amrile, others say he didn't do it on the lip. He did a bedukin shabayin. He caused a cataract in the eye. Now there's a long discussion. How can you do that? How is it possible? Uh, put that from some other time. How did he make that damage? Some actually say he didn't really make the damage. He swapped the animal for an animal that has these damages. Duchta. The, these, either one of these two damages, blemishes, was in the place Diladidan Havamuma. We as Jews consider it a blemish, and we would disqualify that animal as a carbon. Ola did who, but for Goyim, Lav Mumahu. For Goyim, that's not considered a mum. All right, now here Bar Kamsa shows up with this carbon, and we have a dilemma. So the Rabbanon the Krave, the Rabbanon thought, may, listen, we have, this is a, he's being sent by the Kaiser. We can't ignore him. So perhaps we should consider using this as a carbon, Mishum Shloy Malchus, for the sake of peace. Uh, we don't want to get the king, king uh, angry. Amalahu Rab Zechariah ben Avkulas. Rab Zechariah ben Avkulas said, Yoimru, uh, a mistake might happen. What's the mistake? They will say, mumim gabim If we are going to break the rule and accept and use this animal with the blemish on the Mizbeach, people will start saying, hey, carbonists do not have to be picture perfect. 
How could we allow it? No, we can't, I don't care. I don't care that he's representing, he's being sent by the Kaiser. We can't, we will, be, we will be worried about this. Now some ask, the reason why the Chacham were accepting it is because it's Bikuach Nefesh. You don't want to get the king angry. What, how is Reb Scharia answering that being the people will say, Bali Mumim, Kreivim, Mizgibbeach, that's why you can't bring it. It's it's chfort bikuach nefesh. So one of the answers is, it is given is it's bikuach nefesh now. This is a bikuach nefesh now, but it's going to lead to an outbreak of events where people are going to do it when it's completely not bikuach nefesh. And because eventually, when everybody's going to bring, people are going to say you're allowed to bring carbonus that have bali mum that are bali mum. There is no pikuach nefesh in, 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 in those stories. So Rabbi Zechariah thought that it, it, even though at this moment it's pikuach nefesh, I cannot break a rule that will apply in all cases. Several amygdalae. So they thought our other option is to kill Bar, uh, Bar Kamsa. Why kill him? So he should not be able to go back to the king and tell him that the uh, the Yidden refused to use the carbon. Amalahu Rabbi Zechariah Rabbi said, I can't allow you to do that either. Because Yoimru, people will say, Matil Mum Bikachim Yeharig. We know that you're not allowed to waste Kachim. You're not allowed to bring to waste holy matters. Fine. But if God forbid somebody did, somebody did something and he ruined something from the base from uh, uh, Kachim. There is no punishment capital. There is no death punishment. If we're going to go kill him to, because of uh, reasons here, people are going to say that anybody who causes a carbon to be blemished or damages anything of Kachim gets killed. And that's wrong. So therefore, we can't do anything to this. So Rabbi Yochanan said, so they didn't accept it. And therefore he went back. And the king got upset. You know what the end of the story is? The tolerance. And the some explain it. is The humility. The, uh, being so humble. Being so correct. We'll talk about this soon. Others say the tolerance. The patience. The over-tolerance of... of